Welcome to Blender Frenzy. I am Justin, and I normally don't do this many release notes for Blender and the, the features that Blender has, uh, unless it's a long-term support release. But um, the past two releases, 3.0 and 3.1, have made drastic improvements to the VSC, and I just can't wait to show you. So I'm just going to go here so you can go to the Blender release notes, which is at uh, wiki.com blender.org and you can go here you see a list of uh, the old versions and then what's um, the latest stable release which right now is 3.1 and I'm going to click on that and then we scroll down to VFX and video and there's not a lot but this is going to be even more unconventional even for me because I usually go from top to bottom but I'm going to skip all of these and jump to this one support copying pasting strips with animation across different scenes this is huge. Uh, let's go to this one here. So let's scroll in here. It says, when copying strips between two scenes, it wasn't possible to copy animation curves along with the strips. This was so annoying. And I was actually thinking about what kind of tutorial I could create of how to create your own assets so that you can copy and paste in there. And I was trying to think of how I would include the animation in there and all these workarounds. But now you can actually just copy straight from one scene to another. Let me show you how it worked before. So if you're not using the Blender Launcher, I highly recommend this. Um, I'll put a link to it in the post. But Blender Launcher allows you to have several different versions all at the same time, which I already did anyway, but it was a little bit painstaking to do it myself. Uh, but this, you can just launch whatever Blender version. You can see the, all the downloads. See, I these are the, the all the versions that are out there. You can do daily builds. You can do experimental builds. Um, whatever, whatever you want. And so uh, I just have these four right now. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and launch the 3.01 stable. And I'm going to do a new video editing here. And we're just going to collapse this. So I'm going to go ahead and open up. Um, a movie here and I'm just gonna delete the sound I don't need the sound here right now but I've made another scene that I'm gonna append and you can see I just have one scene right here and I'm gonna come over here to file and append and I'm just gonna use the one that I just set up for append for our new scene and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna select the scene so now I have an extra scene in here scene.001 and this is uh, what I've appended here. And I've just made a quick intro animation graphic here. You can see it's just, I just animated this text coming in uh, with this little uh, motion graphic thing in the background. It's n just something really simple. I'll probably do a tutorial on this later. But um, yeah, so I, it's just animated text and animated color strip. That, that's it. And they, they both have a, a strip mask that they're using. But um, yeah, so originally before 3.1, uh, so right now we're in 3.0.1, um, if I wanted to copy this th here, so these three, let's say I wanted to copy these three as an asset, and if I even named this like assets, and um, I want to copy it from here, I can do that by coming here. Control C to copy, and then go to my scene, and then Control V to paste. Okay, so now if I press play, nothing happens. Um, and you can see that I've copied the text here and the color strip, which are out of the screen. Okay, so if I selected this text and I come over down here and I go to transform, you can see there are no keyframes that are set. But if I come over here to assets with the original scene that I appended, this one does have those keyframes. So you can see uh, the text has a keyframe on the Y or has multiple keyframes on the Y and then the color has multiple keyframes on the X position which makes it move like this. And this was so annoying because I could copy the text and the graphic uh, but it wouldn't be a motion graphic anymore because the animation was just basically wiped away. And you can see if I you know grab this and move this down you can see it's still using that mask but you can see that's where the text is and if I grab this and I move this over uh, I grabbed both of those there. Move that over you can see the graphics there and then I would have to reanimate them after I bring it over. Well, this is fine if you only have one thing like this, but you have a whole bunch of motion graphics and you wanna create an asset so you can use over and over in like different tutorial videos and just 
you know, copy and paste and then change the text, but you have the same animation for different texts. So for, for example, this one, I would just change it to um, green screen. And then um, probably bring that down a little bit like this. And then I could also, of course, just play with the initial starting point there. So intuitively you would think that's all you have to do and then you have the same animation. But that was not the case for many, many years until now, 3.1. So I'm gonna come over to 3.1 and let's go ahead and import our footage. I wanna also show you this too because this is also a part of 3.1. So if I uh, drag the footage, I can drag it down here. That was uh, already something that could we could do. I'm just gonna go ahead and um, get rid of these. But uh, now it's more intuitive. You can actually drag into the preview area, uh, which apparently you couldn't do before. And then it will add your video footage. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of that audio because we don't need that, of course. And I'm going to do the same thing. So we have one scene here. I'm going to come over to File and Append. And then I'm just going to choose Append and Scene and Scene. And now we have our scene here which again, we can name assets. And I probably should have named that assets already. Um, but uh, yeah, so now we have, of course, our animation and our assets. So I'm gonna take these three again and copy them and come over to scene and just paste them and then press play and it plays along with the animation like it's supposed to. So now all I have to do is come up here with the text and change that again, not our screencast keys. Here we go, uh, green screen. And then we'll change that size down, something like that. And that looks good. And then go back to the beginning and boom, there we go. So now we have an asset that we've created for another video and imported it into this video and just changed it for this video. And this is good if you're creating a tutorial series with a motion graphic animation that you've created. You can just have an asset scene where you just kind of build up different assets and then you can copy and paste them over. Okay, so there is one caveat to this though um, that I found because I actually tried this first. And that is, let's go back to our assets. Um, if it's in a meta strip like this, so I did the same thing except for I put it all in a meta strip. So all the animation is in this meta strip. The meta strip itself is not animated, so that's that's important. Um, so if I just take this and I copy that, and I bring it over here and I paste this, if I play this, it does not play that animation. Um, if I come in here, uh, let's select these. Yeah, that animation is wiped out um, or wiped clean, wiped away. How do you, however you say that? Uh, so here's our uh, keyframes there and keyframes there on these different ones. If you do have a meta strip or several meta strips here, actually, you know what? Let me try something. Let me try adding a keyframe here. Just um, we'll just add a keyframe on zero right here for for this. Well, let's try copying that again, and then. Um, we'll get rid of this and we'll just paste that there. Let's see if that, okay, that keyframe stays on the meta strip, but um, it still does not recognize the ones that are inside the meta strip. So unfortunately for these, if you do have a lot of meta strips with animation inside, you're going to have to go into each meta strip and then you have to copy them directly from inside. So if I copy these here and then come out here, and then I go in here, let's just delete these. Let's go back, uh, not there, let's go back here and paste. Um, then you have, um, oh, let's refresh, there we go. Then you have your animation there. So, um, and of course, uh, it doesn't have to be in a meta strip if I um, just get rid of that and then paste it out here. That would be there. Um, of course, uh, these need to have, oh yeah, that meta strip was the one that was using this strip mask base. So you'd have to come into each of these in the modifier and add that strip mask base there so that 
um, it would have that applied. So that's what that Metastrip was doing. It just kind of packaged it all in one. Okay, so that is it. So that's a huge, huge uh, improvement. I mean, I was like, again, this is going to save me a lot of hours of making tutorials of how to get around, you know, adding back the same kind of animation, which was kind of possible, but not, uh, it was just, it was a, it was a painstaking workaround that you would have to do. And it was almost like that was the same amount of time that you take to actually just redo the animation. So not anymore. This is great. 3.1 and up and forward. So let's go look at some of the other features here, uh, which we've kind of already saw. Uh, let's go back here. Okay, so uh, support drag and drop for data playbacks. And I wanna show you something cool here that I just discovered. You probably already knew that, but I'm a little bit slow uh, on the uptake sometimes. So um, when you have these here, I was kinda like, well, I wish I could see what they're talking about because they use a lot of jargon that I don't necessarily understand. So um, for using the outliner and or asset browser as seen independent tools, users to be able to drag and drop data blocks into the VSC. Okay, so I was like, oh, I wanna see this. Well, it, the differential revision here, a lot of times, if I just go there, they actually do have like little GIFs of screenshots of little animations here that you can see them pulling this in. And yes, I say GIF because that's how you say it. <laughs> Not starting in another internet GIF war. Um, but uh, yeah, so you have the asset browser, which I haven't actually played with or used for the VSC, but you have data blocks and asset browser where you can just click and drag those things straight into the uh, sequencer, which is really nice. And not just the sequencer, which we just um, went over, uh, you can add drag and drop handler to the preview area. So we saw that. So I'm just gonna come down here, go to this one also, and we can see that here. So uh, here's our asset browser and just you can drag it in here and you can drag it down here um, either way. It's just more intuitive when you drag it into the preview area rather than dragging it into the actual timeline area. Use time codes by default proxy size uh, to 25% is no longer set by default. I used 25% so that didn't bother me but you know whatever um, these things are um, set in I believe we can go to our preferences here um, let's do system video sequencer okay so here's our memory cache limit proxy setup I have it set as manual you can do automatic um, I, I guess that's up to you I um, let's see if we go to the view yeah so it automatically sets the view at a hundred percent proxy size um, actually maybe that is better I don't know if that's what it means here or if it means down here in the proxy settings down here uh, per project per strip that it automatically would have it set at 25 percent down here I don't know but either way it doesn't bother me but this is where you would set up those proxies it does look like it does automatically record run uh, which is something that they mention here um, maybe it's in the actual okay yeah so here it says set used time code to record run time codes are built with proxies at the same time therefore proxies are built and used this will resolve possible mismatch output so i'm just going to probably use the default record run i've heard people talk about that on tutorials how to use proxies with record run anyway so that's good you can obviously change it to different things i haven't messed with that i don't know what each of them does but uh yeah um and here this is the thing so let's go here uh let's do this do does this have a, a differential revision it does so this is again more like coding type stuff i want to see if there's any sort of screenshot or animated gif thingy there's not there's a, a blend file so import large video. Oh, this is to reproduce the error. This one I haven't really looked at. Um, I really was just mainly excited about uh, getting 
this one with <laughs> the copying the animation F curves over. It does say only F curves are supported. I, I'm not entirely sure what sort of animation doesn't have F curves. Um, maybe drivers. Uh, so if something has a driver on there, it, it might not be copied over. And I think it has to do with the names and renaming different strips and different settings and names of assets and stuff like that. So there is one drawback though um, and a bug that I should probably report. Um, so in 3.1 here, um, the wipe. Um, so let's uh, let's actually come over here and we'll add in a an image here and um, I'm just going to um, add a wipe transition. So what I normally did with my transitions is add in a color, select this, shift select this one, add in a transition wipe, and then what it was supposed to do is wipe uh, toward the image that it was connected to. Uh, so if we go back to here, you can see this is what it was supposed to do. So I've got a color, same thing with a wipe, and it's supposed to do, this is by default what it's supposed to look like. And we have blend mode replace here. We can also do an alpha over. Um, so it should work either way. And then you can change in or out. You can change the angle 90 uh, here. You can uh, add in a blur width, something like that. Um, you can do single, you can do double, you can do iris or clock. So all these things work just fine in 3.0 but coming to 3.1 for some reason the wipe has a glitch i don't actually know if this applies to um, other transitions i've only tried it with the wipe so single double nothing here we've got alpha over let's try replace no that just doesn't work yeah n none of this works in or out it just jumps straight to the picture so this definitely looks like a bug um let me try a different transition i want to see if uh, a cross will okay so that works so that's how that's what it's supposed to look like um and then cross we can do color the opacity and there's not really a lot of options for a cross. Uh, let's try. Oh, there's only another one, gamma cross. Nope, yep, so that one works. So yeah, the wipe does not work. So I'm gonna create a tutorial on how to create your own kind of wipe as a hack or a replacement for, for this. So you kind of like a DIY hack wipe later, but just want to let you know that that is something that's kind of broken in 3.1. Anyway, that is it. That I just wanted to show you uh, some of the awesome improvements uh, and just a minor setback, which I'm sure will be fixed in future builds. So, uh, But mostly, this is great news. We have um, animations that can be copied over along with the strips, which wasn't possible before, so I'm excited. I'm going to be creating a lot more tutorials hopefully in the near future so stay tuned and you'll see me in the next one